When it comes to query tuning, SQL Sentry provides tons of information to identify your most poorly performing queries, as well as the details you need to make educated decisions about how to optimize those queries. When I go to the top SQL tab, as we see here, I can jump to, again, any time frame, currently or in history, uh, just as with all the other views within SQL Sentry. The completed queries tab will always show those queries that completed within that specified time frame. Out of the box, the threshold for what's defined as top SQL is anything that runs longer than five seconds on your monitored servers. But that threshold can be adjusted globally or on a server by server basis, specifying duration, CPU, or IO thresholds or a combination thereof. So you can customize what is top SQL for your unique workloads on each server you're monitoring. You notice with each statement captured, you get the full text data, application, database, host, login, duration, and metrics as to the resources consumed by that particular batch or statement, CPU, reads, writes, along with other details like granted memory and tempdb allocations. The running queries tab shows me the currently active running queries on my server that have exceeded those thresholds. So this will continually refresh regardless of what time frame you specified and we're looking at at the completed queries tab. Procedure stats and query stats give us additional information. Sometimes it's not just any one query that's consuming all the resources on your ser server, but it could be a death by a thousand cuts scenario where a single query that completes possibly in just a couple of milliseconds, but runs hundreds or even thousands of times per minute, cumulatively is consuming resources and putting undue overhead on your monitored server. The procedure stats and query stats tabs will capture that type of workload in addition to what's captured beyond those thresholds in the completed and running queries tabs. You'll notice with those queries that are captured, if it's a batch with the individual statements that will capture, they'll be displayed here, along with the estimated execution plan that was captured at the time the query was executing. Down below, we have query history as well, where each dot represents an execution of that query over time. So I can see trends where there's certain times where the query seems to run longer than other times. Is it trending longer with each time that it executes? And then to further dig into actual query tuning, I can open up this plan diagram with Plan Explorer. Plan Explorer is a free tool for taking a look and analyzing your query plans gathered manually through Management Studio, but it's fully integrated into SQL Sentry so that you can automatically analyze those query plans that were collected 24 seven on your top SQL statements within SQL Sentry. When I jump further into our plan explorer functionality, you notice I have a plan diagram that's a bit more user-friendly than the native tools provide, making it easy to spot by highest cost operations, highlighting inefficient operations like scans and seeks, uh, as well as the opportunity to, to easily split out things like costs. For example, if I just wanna see costs by IO because I know my server is mostly IO bound, I can split that out and identify now the operations that are strictly consuming the most IO resources instead of that combination thereof. If SQL Server makes a index recommendation that is noticed here within the query plan details uh, indicated by the warning message here, and I can easily uh, open up and take a look at those missing index details just like I can with the native tools. There are a lot of other views here as well, uh, including jumping down into things like a join diagram on any of the underlying tables that were involved and a in-depth index analysis. So here I've selected one of those operations such as a table scan. I can see the table that was involved, the columns that were involved highlighted in bold here, along with any predicates in, that were applied along with if they're involved in any kind of sorts. To the right here, I can see, first of all, the actual indexes that are on this particular table, along with the missing index recommendation. All these indexes you see are given a total score here, so I can easily see which index would provide the most value in improving the performance of this query. But I don't need to stop there. Let's say instead of creating this new index recommendation, I wanted to look into the opportunity to modify my existing index to improve performance of this query. Denoted here by the red cells indicates the columns that are not currently covered by that existing index, but if they were, would likely improve performance. 
this is essentially a sandbox environment where it's not going to go out and actually change an individual index, but it gives me theoretically the capability, what if I wanted to add this column to this existing index? You notice when I do, it ups the score. We automatically are calculating the performance impact of making these changes to that existing index. And as I do, the score continues to go up. Once I've made the modifications, if I'm happy with what I've set up here, I can go down to the bottom and get the script to make those modifications to the index. But this gives me the capabilities to theoretically make those changes without having to go by trial and error in a dev and test environment first to make little t tests to see what will improve this query's performance. I've got it all done here theoretically within SQL Sentry.